a warm spring welcome to everyone who's able to join us uh, tonight. My name is Deanna. I'm a volunteer here at St. Luke's. Our speaker tonight is Ron Lee. I'm going to invite him up, and while he's um, making his way up, I will tell a quick story. Um, last fall, as we were scheduling different speakers, I had put a notice on uh, the Facebook community page that said, if you've got a story to share, um, we, we'd love to hear it. Let me know. And Ron was kind enough to send me an email, and he said, hey, you know, I, I, saw, I saw what you put on Facebook. I'm actually leaving. I usually spend the winters in Florida, um, so I'm, I'm leaving shortly, but I'm going to attach something that I wrote. And if, you, if there's an opportunity for you to use it or you think it might be helpful to somebody, I, just, I want you to have it. I'm kind of just kind of responding to Facebook, and I'm on my way out of town. Um, and I said, well, when are you coming back? And he said, in the spring. And I said, great. Uh, come in person and share it yourself with us in the spring. So I'll hold on to it for you. And um, so he and I have been uh, in touch after he returned from Florida. Um, and I'm just really grateful that he's willing to do this because I know that that was not really his original plan. His original plan was to give me what he'd written and, uh, and go to Florida. Um, so I'm really grateful that he's willing to be with us uh, here tonight. So thank you. Um, Ron, tell us, tell us who you are and a little bit about your family. First of all, it's hard to say no when Deanna asks you a question. <laughs> That's the plan. <laughs> my name is Ron, and my wife is Kay. And we currently live in Madison on the southwestern side of the city, uh, somewhat in the Madison, Fitchburg, Verona, City Line, the City Line zigzags all over the place. Uh, we have been members of St. Luke's uh, since 2015. Uh, we moved here from Saginaw Bay, Michigan. Uh, in case you don't know where that is, the famous hand goes up, and it's right here. Okay. The best spot. <laughs> so anyway, um, you asked me earlier, where am I from? And I thought about it, and that's a pretty hard question, a broad question, actually. Uh, the most immediate place I came from was Michigan, of course, but I am actually a New York City boy, uh, born and raised in the Brooklyn area, and then I moved out of the city and graduated high school in the northern Catskill Mountains, and that's in upstate New York. And then I graduated college in 1971 from Valparaiso University. It's a Lutheran college in northern Indiana. After graduation, I swore to myself that I would never come back to the Midwest. Northern Indiana was very flat, and I thought that all of the Midwest was flat, just like that. But then I met Kay. I met her in New York, upstate New York, a Michigan State girl, and she brought me back to Michigan, where we raised our family there. However, since none of our kids live in Michigan anymore, and three of our four kids and eight of our nine grandchildren live on the western side of Lake Michigan, we decided to move closer. Besides, we didn't like the Chicago traffic every time we came over. Our twin daughters live here in the Madison area, and our son, Jonathan, lives in LaGrange, Illinois, a suburb of Chicago, and our oldest son lives in the Philadelphia area. You had asked me also, what brought me to Madison and to St. Luke's? Well, I just explained our twin daughters are here. Uh, Katie Lee and Abby Rodriguez were here. And Katie works for Epic, and Abby works for CUNA Mutual. And I believe you know her husband, Preston Rodriguez. Um, a very proud son-in-law of mine. He's <laughs> active in the church here. Kay and I have spent our entire lives is, as members of a small church. This is our first time in a big church, a full-service church, and we find it very refreshing. There are many activities and programs here. Since Abby and our son-in-law, Preston, were already members here and active in the church, it was easy to join. But also, we love the openness, the warmth, and the welcomeness, if that's a word, of the folks we'll here. we make it one. <laughs> to me personally, St. Luke's has fed my spirituality in worship and by the way in which the words of God are related to me in life. 
Now, I'll lead into the question that I'm here for to explain. Yeah, well, I, and I would love, I, I promise neither Ron or I get any kickbacks for um, the, a, pro, a, a gift that he received that I would really love for him to just explain a little bit about. Um, and you can mention the name of it. I just think it was a really cool gift, and I would love to for people to have a little bit of context um, for the gift and then the question that you answered that sort of led you and I to connect. Well, last year, I was given a question to answer. It was, have you ever doubted your faith? That's a big question. <laughs> now, let me explain. A year ago for Christmas, our daughter, Katie, bought Kay and I a gift called StoryWorth. StoryWorth is a website in which each week you are given a question about your life to answer. It runs for about 52 weeks, and at the end, your responses are published for you in a book of memories. There were many questions such as, what was your childhood like uh, while you were growing up? Did you have a favorite pet? What did you do in school? What was your first job? What was your best vacation? Questions like that. It was fun recalling all that. I had, Kay and I both had a lot of fun answering these questions. But then came the question of, have you ever doubted your faith? It took me a while to gather my thoughts on this. And I think for me to explain it, I need to read it to you because I don't know if I could repeat it verbally. <laughs> and I started the article off by saying, this is not an everyday question. And it took me a long time to answer. Probably at different times in my life, I might have had a different response, but I am older now, hopefully wiser than previously, and always in search of further knowledge about things. I would say today that yes, I had doubts, and I blame that on the human side of me, when I would let my emotions run away, especially at a low or tragic event in my life. Uh, I am previously divorced. My brother died, my mother died. And in those points, to borrow a phrase, my wife once said, sometimes God seems so far away, but he's still there. But when life is hitting you hard and you have no one to turn to, I always find myself looking to God. I think it's called prayer. I was always raised in a Christian faith along with my family. My father was not a Christian. I am told he was more of a Taoist, uh, as was his father. Uh, those people would go out and meditate. I am told my grandfather would go out and meditate in the cold snow for days on end. I don't know how he did it. But I'm, I was born and raised, baptized and confirmed, a Missouri Synod Lutheran. At the age of seven, I was baptized. I was confirmed at 12. I went through much of my teenage Christian life taking God and church for granted. I went through the motions, sang in the church choir, joined the youth group, and basically did what was expected of me. I learned Luther's catechism, and to this day I am baffled by the words in, with, and under. <laughs> I don't know if the younger folks understand that, but their folks can explain it to them. I was I close to God? No. Even when I went to college at Valparaiso University, a Lutheran college, remember? It was the same thing. I participated in the university chapel and choir. I served as an acolyte at the uh, university chapel. I was a member of the Guild of St. Stephens, a very regimented bunch of acolytes. All students were required to take 12 or 16 credit hours in theology. Was I any closer to God? Again, no. Incredibly, I even had one theology professor, an ordained minister, say he did not believe in miracles. Uh, that blew me away. I even participated in a fad that was popular in my dorm. Now, this is in the 1960s, the late 60s and early 70s. The fad was to have a seance. Yes. The whole hocus pocus stuff, sitting in a dark room with a group of people, a candle and a mirror. Can you imagine that in a Lutheran university? It was all imagination and letting your mind coast. In the dark room, the darkness is a void that simply lets your imagination run wild. 
It was pretty spooky. As I got older, married, and had children, you could say I matured, or maybe I had an epiphany of sorts. I was now a responsible, I was, uh, was now a responsible adult trying to raise my kids in a Christian setting. Over the years, I learned that to have faith in God, you needed to trust in God and have a sense of spirituality. As strange as it may seem, the very first time I heard spirituality mentioned was when I toured West Point, the military academy in New York, when our oldest son, Jim, spent his plebe orientation there. Uh, by the way, he was class of 93, so he did graduate. The orientation officer told the parents that in addition to developing well-rounded cadets, the academy was equally concerned that each cadet be able to develop a sense of spirituality, no matter what religion they were in, because there will be occasions in their life when each cadet may need it. The second notable experience I encountered spirituality was later when we lived in Saginaw, and our church was, going, was losing members, and because of the discord we had with the, uh, the pastor, we eventually had to close the church. As some good friends explained to me, the current pastor simply was not feeding my spirit. I am not getting any spirituality from the, his sermon talks. Um, that's a story that I don't want to go there. But anyway, that church, Grace Lutheran Church of Saginaw, closed its doors after 75 years. And um, it, was a, it was a real traumatic moment. I was on the church council, and uh, I was involved with the, the sale and closing of the church. In contrast, our church here in Middleton has largely filled me and helped me gain a sense of spirituality. Overall, I think I have a better sense of spirituality, and I think it means having a sense of God, what you wanted out of God, and what learning what God wanted out of you. Hence, when I come to church, is my spirituality being fed? Where I am at this point in my life, I would say yes. Am I close to God? Maybe closer than before. Um, have I strengthened my trust in God? Yes. Did I pray much as a young man? No. Do I pray now? Nearly every night I pray and give thanks to God for what I have and for what all my family has, has and what they've accomplished. And for God, I also ask God to bless all the people that I love and know and all those that I have yet to know. One thing I need to, add, to mention is that I never doubted God. I doubted the ability to have faith in God. And that has gotten much better now. So... When you and I were talking a little bit earlier, um, before the service, we were talking a little bit about spirituality, and I, and I know that you said that for you it's kind of a feeling. How do you, how do you tap into that feeling? What are some ways that, that allow you to feel closest to God? Well, like I said before, it's a feeling. It's hard to explain, but you know it when you get it. And, and how I tap into that sometimes is through meditation, definitely when I come to church. Uh, sometimes at the end of the day when I say my evening prayers at night, I'm laying on my back and I'm staring at the ceiling and um, thanking God for, I, re, I recollect all the events of the day and I thank God for everything and I pray for it to continue and for better health for everybody. Um, it's a feeling that I've never experienced before. I just, I can't explain it. It's, it's hard. It is hard to put words around. Tell us three things that you want us to know about you. <laughs> well, we are here for the rest of our lives. We are here to serve St. Luke's to whatever our abilities and health will allow us. And lastly, my wife is a Michigan State grad. So naturally, we cheer for whomever is playing against the University of Michigan. That said, go Badgers. <laughs> there's, yeah, there's some, there's some clapping from the peanut gallery back there. <laughs> so. Well, Ron, uh, thank you. Doubt, is a, is a, doubt and spirituality are 
big, big topics and, and very real topics and things that, that we're all on a journey of. And I'm just so grateful that, that you reached out to me last fall and that, and that you um, were willing to come back this spring in person and, and share like, this with us. Like I said, in the early years, and I, had, I went through the motions and all that. Um, I felt lost. Uh, I, um, I even went to these full gospel fellowship things and, and listened to those guys speak in tongues. It did nothing for me. And I just, it, well, uh, it's a different day now. Well, it sounds like God found you where, where you were and, uh, and, and you were receptive and, and found him too. So we're glad that that led you here to St. Luke's and here with us. Thanks for letting me bear my soul. <laughs> well, thanks for your willingness. Thank you.